Okay, let me try to go through the latest iteration of the spreadsheet. This is now Python model version 1.5. And I'll go through sheet by sheet. There are no change to the parameters. If I go to the institutions here, just make sure you have the types of these attributes correctly. Some of these need to be arrays that I previously specified as lists. You have ID ag. This is going to be the IDs of agents who visit the institution. Now in the institution class, remember, the institution class covers all institutions of a particular type. So for instance, for the uh, five grocery stores, or five elementary schools, right, there's going to be information for all five elementary schools. So ID Ag is a list and that list contains the information of agents who visit all five elementary schools. Now, each elementary school will have an array of agents that visit it. So this is going to be a list of arrays. Now, I think you initialize as an empty list. We'll see how it is down at the bottom there. So PAG, this is similar. Instead of IDs, which are integers, these are probabilities, which are numbers between 0 and 1. All right, this is fine. This actually doesn't need to be green, so I'll take off the shading that doesn't need to be there this is new well we need to record the data as it comes so what we want to do is record infections where and when they occur so inf list is going to be a list of lists of arrays so what does that mean uh, one entry of uh, inf list will be a list of arrays each entry of inf list corresponds to a particular time at each time, we have infected agents that are infected at all the institutions of that type. All right, so at each time, I'm going to have a list of arrays. All right. It's similar to ID Ag, except there's a list involved because there has to be one list of arrays per time. Uh, one list of arrays per time. So we have a list of lists of arrays. Okay, so we'll initialize that empty list. Right. And you'll see down here, what we have here. ID, AG, PAG have to be arrays. This one, as I said, does not need to be shaded. We can unshade it. And that should be fine. All right. So we have this and others also. So when you go down and make sure that you have these conventions correct for all of the different uh, institution classes. All right. Let's see if there's anything else here that we need to change. So this should be fine. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, this should be, uh, so this one should be fine also. All right, this I think is for, all right. So I think we're good for institutions. Let's look at homes. Now homes, we also need to keep a list of uh, infected at each time. So we call this inf list. This is a list of successful agents that experience infectious contact at each time step. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to modify this. This is really a list of arrays of uh, IDs of susceptible agents who experience infectious contact at homes. Right? We know that infection can take place in an institution or in a home. So at each time step, we're going to have individuals who are infected at home. And so for each time step, we'll have an array of IDs of all the agents that are infected at that time step in their home or that have experienced infectious contact. Now, the thing is that people might experience infectious contact at more than one place at once. That's okay. Uh, we are not going to worry about that. Uh, we might worry about that later on, but we're not going to worry about that now. So infectious contact means that the susceptible will be infected, but might be infected in more than one place. And then be careful, be, make sure that this ID ag is a, is an, uh, uh, the list of lists is an array of IDs. Okay, so now uh, that's what we have here. Whenever we have IDs of agents, we're converting that from lists to, uh, to arrays because arrays you can use the fancy indexing, the logical indexing, and you can use uh, one array as an index for another array and so on. So that's kind of the rule that we're converting all lists of ID um, 
uh, agent IDs to uh, to arrays. Well, let's go to agent class. Agent class is fine, I think. All right, network creation, we're still good with that. And then this one here. So what we need to do now is to record the data as it comes. Right. Uh, now, this one is new also. So I need to just highlight that. Okay. All right, so there's a lot that's the same. Did I make a mistake? Yes, that's fine. Okay. There's a lot that's the same. What was new here is that we're uh, recording, as I said, the infections that are taking place at each time step. So for uh, here's the here's the uh, time step here. Okay, and then here you're going through each institution of uh, each type of institution. All right. Now for each type of institution, we're going to say create infless temp. Okay. Now make sure you have the probability of infection correctly. I made a video for this. The link is here. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit more complex than the first specification in the uh, spreadsheet. All right. Now, notice what this list is. This list is an element of this array. What is this? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this list is an element of this array. Actually, this should be called this array. It's not a big deal. All right. So what is it? It's a list of the agent IDs which are in the current institution that we're looking at. So for instance, this would be for elementary schools. The first one would be the list of agents that visit that first elementary school. And it really is an array. So I think I'm going to change that because let me call this this array because it is an array. Now you can call it whatever you like, but I'm going to call it this array because it is it is a array. Okay. Uh, all right, here then this is the same. I need to change this this list to this array. Okay. And let's see this array. All these this lists have to be this array. Maybe I'll just go ahead and change that. Let's see what I have to do here. I have to do find and select. Uh, I'll replace this list with this array. And I'll find the next one. I'll replace. And I'll replace. Okay, and I'll replace. All right. And I'm going to highlight this because um, this is the variable here is changed. So you may want to make sure that's true. All right, so what do we have here? Here we're computing the new infections. Uh, this one here is a zero one vector that logically in logically indicates the infected people. Now recall what we're doing with inf contact. Inf contact is going to be used to update the agent's status. All right. So inf contact has the same shape as agent status, and the index means the same. Agent status the in, the uh, the agent indexes are one by one. Okay, so for agent status J would be the status of agent J. All right. So in, con in contact is going to update the status of agent J. Now, if I want to get the list of agents that are infected, I need to get the I agent IDs themselves. Now, agent IDs are contained in this array. These are the IDs of the agents that visit that particular institution. Now, the ones that are infected are exactly those for which inf, inf, infectvec is a, well, is a one, because infectvec is picking out the ones that are infected. All right. So if I choose the IDs correspond to infectvec equal one, uh, that's going to be the agents that are infected at that institution at that particular time. All right. uh, so, so uh, so you're going to get an array here. This is the array of people who are infected at that particular institution. And we're going to add that as an element to infless temp. Infless temp is going to be a list of arrays. Okay. So here I have a list of arrays. Now, when I have finished with that particular uh, instance of the institution, I want to add that to, to the list. All right. So you're going to be generating 
uh, inf list temp, and inf list is going to be a uh, list of lists that are inf list tense. So, so this is going to be, I should say, as an element. Okay, and here I'm not saying do not concatenate. Okay, you want to maintain these separate lists. You have separate lists, separate lists for each instance of the institution. So I'd have a separate list for elementary school one, separate list for elementary school two, separate list for elementary school three. Okay, so maybe I can show that here. Okay, let me get this out. And if I take um, this inst of inf list, of, of uh, uh, inf list. Okay. So, for example, what's it, what it's going to be is I'm going to have an entry here. I'll have one entry for time. Well, you start with time zero. Okay. And then what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a list of array of uh, arrays. So this might be 5, 7, 2, this might be uh, 4, 9, 12, uh, this might be uh, 6, uh, 21, 1, something like that. So this is going to be, in, these are all agents that are infected at different insta instances of that institution. So for, you could say, at different elementary schools. Okay, all right. So that's going to be the first entry. Second entry is going to be the time t equals 1. Okay. Same thing. I have a list, and that list is going to be a list of arrays. Okay. So I'm recording all of my information. It's almost like a matrix, but not quite because these lists may not be the same size. But I'm keeping all the, I'm having an index for everything that I'm recording, right? I have an index for time. I have an index for which particular instance of that institution. And then I have the agents that are infected there. So I've got a complete record of infections. All right, now let's go back to the model. All right, so that's what this does. Now for homes, it's a little bit different. I'm not going to keep a separate array for each separate home. That's really not necessary because I can get the homes information from the array class. All right, so here, let me highlight this because this also is new, I believe. All right. I create an empty array, infrared temp, okay? Then I leap through the homes, and I'm going to add this. Uh, uh, every time I find infected agents in each home, I'm going to add this. This, this one is concatenate. This here is concatenate. Okay. So infrared temp, that's going to be the agents that are infected at homes during this time step. So let me just make that clear. Okay. All right, so for each time step, you're going to have an array of agent IDs. Or not, well, array will contain all the IDs of agents that are infected at that time step. All right, so I'm going to create that array, and then I'm going to add that A as an element of, of this uh, inf list, so this one is do not concatenate. So, uh, so it's a, as, an, as the next here, well it says here, it's here clearly, next element, of, this is going to be the next element of the list, right? It's not uh, concatenate, it's the next element. Okay. Now the agents, we don't need to keep that, we can only, we only need the record of infections at the institutions and in the homes. All right, so let's go to the graphs now. We're going to use that information to make these graphs. All right, and so uh, first graph is going to be this. You'll have six lines. The first will be total number of new infections per, versus time. Um, so this is, uh, okay, uh, so this is new infections. So here, this, here the x-axis is time, and the y-axis is number of infections. No, here's, uh, so this is number of new infections. So this is not cumulative. 
It's not the cumulative number of infections, it's the number of new infections at each time. All right, now you have the arrays that you created, you can find this information. Right? Uh, because you have the arrays at each time step of those that are infected at each institution and those are infected at each home. So you just count the number of the, of the entries in those arrays. Now actually for A, you can just add the other ones. Uh, well, I guess it's not, it's not quite true. Um, it's not quite true, but uh, uh, we can, but you, you can compute it uh, similar to that. All right, so B is number of new infectious contacts versus time that occur in elementary schools. So you can get that from the institutions class. All right, again, the x-axis is time and the y-axis is new infections. Not cumulative, so you're not adding time one plus time two plus time three plus time four. You're going to get the new infections separately for time one, for time two, for time three, or time four. Okay. okay, and you'll plot that in, an, in, in, a, in a plot. So then I also want the number of new infectious contacts versus time that occur in high schools. Okay, elementary schools, high schools, supermarkets, workplaces, the four different institutions, and the number that occur in homes that do not occur in institutions. Okay, so in fact, yes, these, if I take the sum of these five, I should get this, this one A. So you can see how that works. It may be that A is too much bigger than the others, in which case we'll just leave off A. But, uh, but uh, for, start, we, for starters, we can make this graph. All right. Graph number two, a graph with seven lines. So here we're going to do the seven lines give number of new infections at each of the seven schools as a function of time. All right. Because here we didn't uh, break out the, we didn't break out the uh, individual schools this is number of new infections in all elementary schools, number in all high schools, number in all supermarkets, etc. Here we're going to break out the different schools that are in the model and see which ones have most infections. All right. So those, these two are time graphs. One and two are time graphs. Let's go to number three. Number three, we want a network map. So this is going to be an XY map. So it's going to have X and Y here. Now the X and Y are geographical, right? Uh, so we have, you have your X and your Y. Uh, here, let me just take it over here. We can talk about this. Okay. Oops, that's funny. Uh, I don't know if I can fix this. Okay, figured it out. There we go. All right, so what we have, we're actually going to have a square, so you can probably draw a square, something like this. All right, now here it says represent homes as points. So you can have points, primary schools as hollow circles. You can use different colors also. Age high schools as hollow squares, uh, workplaces as hollow diamonds, right? And groceries as hollow triangles, all right? It's good to use different colors as well. And then for each institution, draw line segments between the institution and the homes that have visiting agents. So you can get this information also. So this, these are going to be straight lines. It may look pretty junky, but let's give it a shot and see what it looks like. Okay. It, may, it should be informative. Uh, so we'll have that. All right. So that's a static map. Okay. And then the next, the next one is... Uh, all right, so infect there's an infection map. After each time step, generate a new plot. It's going to be similar to three, but a little bit different. Uh, so number the plot figures consecutively. You can do the statement figure, like you can do, can do figure uh, JT, something like this. So I, let's see. Okay, so you can do this like uh, plt.figure JT. If, if, that's your time loop. Okay. Okay. Plot the homes and institutions as in three. And for all institutions, for each infected agent that visits that institution, draw a red line from the agent's home to the institution. Okay. So at each time step, you should be able to figure out the infected agents that visit that institution. And you can draw a red line for that. And then for each agent that is infected at that institution, draw a cyan line from that, the institution to that agent's home. Okay, so what you're going to have is something that looks like this. It looks kind of like that. If I hope home in on one institution, I get something like this. All right, let's just take one. I don't remember what element, I guess elementary schools is like that. And here's some homes here. 
Okay. Now suppose I have an infected agent here and here. Those infected agents get a uh, visit, and then suppose these guys get infected. Okay. So it would look something like that. Now we're going to have a lot fewer lines that have colors because you're not going to have so many. And you're going to generate one of these for each time step. So you're going to have a whole bunch of plots, like 50 plots. You may want to arrange it so that your uh, time loop, uh, that you run your time loop manually instead of having a for loop. So you can just run your cell once for each, each time step and then generate a new plot. You may want to do it that way. Okay, but you're going to generate one plot for each time step. And that's going to kind of make a movie that shows the progress. If we have time, we may, may actually be able to make a movie. But, but let's do this first to make this just to make this simple. All right, so that's an overview of what we're going to do. And certainly I'll have more sessions to explain this in more detail. All right, hope that's helpful.